the recording. There we go. So welcome everyone to the August 26th CubeVert SIG storage meeting. <clears throat> We're collecting some agenda items that you'll see there and then we can get started. So uh, I guess Shelly, as soon as you're uh, you're ready, you can kick us off with the webhook topic. Yeah, sure. So after some com conversations, um, uh, I want wanted to pass it by the group and the community about the decision to change the VM restore uh, way. Um, we have currently a webhook for the VM restore. Then in case the VM is running, then we uh, that then the request for creating um, the VM restore uh, is um, is canceled and, and rejected. Um, so in order to be more um, uh, more eventual consistent, we wanted we try to remove. Uh, such webhooks that are prone to races, and this is one of them, since the VM can be started or stopped a minute or a second after. Um, so at first, I I just um, removed the webhook, and um, uh, in the reconcile loop, we check for the same um, check. If the VM is running, then we don't start the restore and let it be like that. Um, and this was, wasn't was ideal since we didn't want um, the restore to, to be able to leave for hours and days. And then when someone stops the VM, suddenly a restore occurs. Um, so we had a couple of suggestions like um, force stop the VM. If someone asks for VM restore, then force stop the, the VM and do the restore because they asked for a restore. Um, another one that we talked about is maybe um, to, uh, to do, um, to move the restore straight to um, a failed, state which is terminated and then the user needs to delete it and start again and i think the mid ground and what we i discussed with uh, the israeli cnv team today is to um add a, a deadline for the restore to start and if and show in the conditions and um, shoot an alert uh, that uh, the restore can start uh, when the VM is running, and let the user have its 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 couple of minutes to to stop the VM in order for the restore to start. If it doesn't start in this like five minutes period of time, um, we fail the restore. And I think that's the decision uh, that that were, there was consent consensus to it, since the fourth stop seemed a bit too drastic and a bit too surprising to a user. And uh, and yeah, the, and the second one is a bit uh, like more troubling than the current behavior, and also a bit. Uh, it it is racy anyways yeah but um um yeah it just requires the the user to delete the vm restore stop the vm and then apply the vm restore again so i think i'll go with number 3 unless someone has any objections or suggestions so the, I guess the one question that comes to my mind is with option three, how would that look from like a, how would a user interface do that? And I would worry, is it too, uh, is it exposing internal logic too much to a, a user interface for that? So like they would probably, a UI would probably 
I don't know how would that would would that work? Would it actually warn you that the VM is running and ask if you'd want to shut it down? Would it would the UI issue the shutdown of the VM first? Um, I just wonder are we are we moving essentially the current logic that the webhook is in? Oh, I guess today if the webhook is rejecting. We've already made sure that the that any kind of UI or end user has to be exposed to that detail. So um, it's not really adding new lower level logic necessarily to a user of the API. I'm just trying to think on that along those lines. Yeah, I, um, in the UI, I think. Um, I don't know if they actually block you from doing a restore if the VM is running or they put a warning or I don't know exactly what's going on with the UI in this case. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's already like preventing this in, in the UI and this will only be more useful for like a CLI user. Because um, I wonder. Yeah. Sorry. So I was wondering for option three, would it also make sense at the same time to add a parameter to the VM restore option that says um, shut down the VM if it's running, like do a, a graceful, graceful shutdown uh, if it's running. And then, uh, then you could actually, then I'm just thinking like if a UI did want to provide uh, an interface for creating the VM restore, they could provide a checkbox for the actual yeah. field of the object. And then the system would take care of shutting down the VM rather than the UI having to make an independent call on that. Cause that could be racy as well. Yeah. So, so with, uh, Michael, I, I talked about this and we, we thought about adding not a flag, but more like, um, uh, a policy of the restore and then there you can have um like the default will be th this uh um deadline the second one will be eventually which is basically deadline zero and a third one uh to like uh, stop stop vm start restore like to prevent the user from the need to press stop. Like it, it wanted to do a VM restore, then it needs to uh, go stop the VM and then go to the restore and like apply the restore. You can do it in a one, either one YAML or in UI in one page to mm -hmm. prevent it from being a Boolean and rather have it as a, as an options and maybe to to be open to the maybe future options. I think it's more recommended to do. <clears throat> yeah, you're right about that. Booleans are are too limiting, uh, and a an an enum would probably be better for that. I Is I that... I asked in the CNV the Israeli team about this uh, policy. Um, they weren't so sure about it, but I think um, it makes it a good option. What would the default uh, policy be? So the default, I think, will be the deadline. Like, because we, as as we said, we don't want a restore to exist like for hours and days without yeah. the user aware. It. And the deadline yeah. will give the user like the five minutes it needs to to stop the VM and then mm -hmm. start the VM restore. If the user wants um, to keep working and then eventually someday it will stop the VM and then the restore will happen, then we can have the this option of eventual restore. Mm -hmm. and, and the stop, uh, stop VM start, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so for me, I'm, name exactly, but... for me, I'm wondering <clears throat> what is the actual use case of waiting other than letting the user shut down the VM in the way that they want. And the reason I ask is just because if, if we're restoring all of the VM state, then anything that they would do 
to the VM in the interim time that the system is waiting for them is going to be mm -hmm. overwritten anyway by the restore. So like, what could a user possibly usefully do in that meantime uh, between uh, the VM shutting down properly and the restore? That would be actually a useful use case. For me, um, it, um, it gives so it's like softer, um, than fourth stop. Cause mm -hmm. again, in, in the UI, it doesn't make much difference, but if you work in the CLI and, um, and the default is a uh, fourth stop, then you might do the restore somehow by accident or you did the restore with the with not exactly the right param parameters or with snapshot or whatever mm -hmm. and it's an un a bit unexpected behavior um and with the with the time with the deadline and the time um if you ran the vm restore and you didn't stop the vm by then um it gives you some grace um like time to Oh, I didn't want this restore. I can delete it before it uh, it's it ruins my current VM or something like that. Yeah, I was actually just while you were describing that, I was considering a scenario. If you if you think of the VM as it's handled, maybe it's a uh, database that's handling some requests for a a website, or it's doing some other kind of request handling, and uh, and that is still useful. Uh, maybe you maybe you're letting the VM finish handling the work that it's currently doing, um, you know, so that mm -hmm. it can shut down. And then it, when you restore it, you'd restore it to a running state. So it would cause that reboot when it's naturally done with whatever it's doing and then booting back up. So maybe that could be useful. Mm -hmm. Um, anyone else want to weigh in on the options? Uh, do folks think that option three sounds like it makes the most sense? So I've, I've seen some requests for what they call online restore, which essentially is just shutting down the VM and restoring while it's running. So um, to me, it actually makes more sense to have the other option where when you do a restore uh you know without a flag the default is that the vm gets shut down and restored to whichever vm you are setting it to sorry when you i i guess i'm not clear on what you mean there exactly sorry so we were talking about the two options right mm -hmm. and with the deadline or where it just immediately shuts down yeah. And and Shelly was making the argument for the deadline. I'm making the argument from immediate shut shutdown. Uh I've I've seen uh, people request uh an online uh, VM restore. So that the VM, while the VM is running, I want to hit the restore button and yep. it will just go ahead and restore, which essentially is just shutting down the VM, doing the restore and starting it again. So mm -hmm. That wouldn't be deadline zero, right? Because deadline zero in option three would move it to failed right away, wouldn't it? It would basically say that if it's yeah. currently running. It, it or, would just be a, a, a graceful shutdown of the of the VM. I'm, I'm not like saying kill the VM. I'm saying just tell it to be shut down normally and, and restore it. Uh... Yeah, we can have another policy like that. Like one policy is stopping the VM and doing the restore and not starting it again, and another one with starting it again. I would say that does, well, yeah, does it make, okay, yeah, maybe it does make sense to be able to select with the, um, the although then it's, I think we're moving away from running true in general, isn't it? So it would, we'd want to yeah. have something that integrates well with run strategy. So basically you restore with run strategy of, running or you'd re restore it with run strategy whatever it was currently set to or something potentially yeah, I, I would save the run strategy somewhere and then when it 
it's done restoring uh, restore it to the mm -hmm. I mean, run strategy is disconnected from like the actual, in a lot of cases, only really like, uh, yeah, it's disconnected from the actual running state of the VM in a lot of cases, like manual. And um, there are some other ones. Um, yeah, I mean, I think giving the user the option of a force stopping it or and this new deadline thing is fine. I, I do think that like, I, I the deadline thing is is a uh, um, I do think a deadline that is a lot longer than like the termination grace period for the VM. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, I, I like the idea that like okay, the default is we'll assume that someone shut down the VM and it's in the state of shutting down, and we'll just wait a couple seconds. No use failing uh, for that case. Um, but I don't know. I don't like it being used for like, oh, I'll create this resource now and give myself a timer to um, <laughs> to do something. <laughs> That's a little weird. But I, I do like the idea of just handling just regular normal termination um, gracefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any other thoughts? So I think it's... Uh... I, I, I'll just say, if we go with this like policy thing and we're like, um, we should enumerate what they're all gonna be upfront, even if we don't implement them all uh, at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was kind of just about uh, uh, to try to articulate here. So add a restore policy to the VM restore spec. Uh, and then let's let's enumerate them. So we have like a um, like I'm not going to get hung up on naming, but um, so we'd have one option would be like immediate on uh, the VM is stopped as part of the restore without delay, right? This is one that's kind of the uh, Alexander case that he was talking about. <clears throat> Alexander added that he wants it to also be start started again. Yes. So I think it should be another option because I'm not sure everyone that does restore wants also. No, start. I mean, that makes sense to, I mean, that makes sense that that would be just the default behavior. But like if something was running, you obviously, I think you'd want to run it again. Because currently I think if it was running, even when it was in the snapshot it was running, we still restored it to be stopped. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, that's because we forced the user to stop the VM before we do a restore. Yeah. And, uh, okay, and the... Oh, and then I'm gonna say, and the run strategy Uh, prior to restore is restored um, is uh, fine. I don't know. That's kind of a that's a pre coffee way of wording that. Um, so hopefully it's understandable enough uh so what what else would we do what would be the so i'm just help me to so we have like the immediate we have um a um like a wait uh uh 
Are we configuring the way the cubevert will wait okay, for The question is, as as Michael said, um, if we want it to be configurable or do we want it to be a constant of, as Michael said, he doesn't want it to be a couple of minutes. He, he said, right. yeah, that, um, but I do think that if a user is, is a pretty beginner, then I want to let him the few minutes to be able to stop the VM itself. Mm -hmm. And then the WM restore will start. If you give it seconds and then go to fail, then it for sure will not be able to. And then it will need to, to delete the restore, stop the VM, reapply the restore. Yep. I'm wondering if it makes sense to key off of the grace termination seconds or something. Maybe not. But because um, if they set that to zero, then this essentially turns this into fail immediately. Um, so okay, so I, I thought that if it's zero, then it, it doesn't have a timeout. Meaning, um, the third option that I thought, which is eventual, if if you okay. think that's a, an acceptable option, maybe have the pre-configured amount of time be a minimum of the uh, grace period of the VM. So if the grace period of the VM is, you know, two minutes, then the minimum value we can put in here is two minutes. I don't know. Right. Okay, so Q vert will we'll wait. That. Yeah, I don't know. I will say I'm just going to wait for some amount of time because that can be determined later uh, for the VM to stop on its own. Now, my question is what what is the VM running state after the restore in this case? Stopped. Okay. So uh, after restore, the VM will remain stopped. And then the next one is eventually. Uh, will delay restoring indefinitely until uh, the VM is observed. Stop. Now the question I would have about that one is, um, is a VM prevented from starting again? Like, cause I could see a race condition where uh, the VM gets restarted. And if the reconcile loop doesn't catch it, uh, then it could start to run again before the restore reconciler catches it. And then we miss the window. This is also something that was raised in the conversation. Uh, relevant to snapshot and restore together because um, mm -hmm. currently in the restore we actually don't not able to to do a restore or it's a problem to do a restore when the VM is running and in the snapshot if um, if it was stopped and then the VM was starting started after um, just before we marked this snapshot as um, as um, as online, then it's possible that we don't do the freeze while the user is using the VM. So same thing for snapshot and restore. We have an, a possible race of thinking that the VM is stopped and then it's running. Mm -hmm. um, I we I think uh, we need to have a little uh, like um, like check um, about the VM, the VM status um, during or 
before terminate before the end of the process to see if it somehow not what um we thought it is and if so to mark the snapshot slash restore as failed because uh, the vm started during the process mm -hmm. cuz we cuz we do mark the vm with some finalizer that uh, annotation that um the vm is during snapshot or during restore and we are not allowing to change the vm uh, vm um, state during that time when it has mm -hmm. this um, annotation but there is some small window between updating the vm and someone starting the vm which can be uh, tricky yeah i wonder if we can put a check in the like before we actually uh would start a vert launcher process is there an active uh vm restore like an eventually vm restore um there in which case then we should do that logic instead of the starting the vm like just to make sure that we catch it i think i'm just going to put here um need to be careful uh, with several potential race conditions it's but it's relevant to all, all all VM restore, not specifically to this condition, to this policy. Okay, fair enough then. I'll move that as a general note. Like I'm not, I'm not sure we, we are safe enough with, with these cases of um, race between starting uh, a VM and restore. Like there is a small window of possibly slipping in. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. irre regardless of this policy, it's something that we need to address in snapshots and restore, I mm -hmm. believe. I think we need to better understand the what, what the cases and and the results because I, I think that there's no way to get a perfectly synchronized uh, anything in Kubernetes. Exactly. So, exactly. but but so I don't think we have to totally fret about it as long as we understand the cases. Uh, and it's okay if like I don't know. I think it's uh, we can't. Um, go overboard with this we just you know it, I do like there are going to be cases where like yeah there are these weird uh like you fundamentally have two resources like and there's no way to synchronize between two resources in Kubernetes yeah case. exactly that's why you need that's why you need to address possible um slips like this and if in the snapshot this like the vm state is somehow not what it, it was when you started it you marked it as as offline snapshot and suddenly you you did the the vm the volume snapshot and suddenly you see that the vm is running somehow i think you need to fail this snapshot and mark it as potentially corrupted yeah we can get into these specific cases later i don't i don't think that it's um it's a small check that covers this small. Yeah, uh, definitely lay out the cases and ways you think we can fix it, and we'll talk about the trade offs. Uh, you know. Maybe yeah, so. I mean, I I worry that a user would create a restore, like an eventually or a timeout one or something, and then they do some painful steps within the VM to scale down, like to stop the workload, you know, to try to not have interruption in service for their end users. And then um, the VM restarts without restoring, and then they're irritated that, um, or, you know, could potentially, if they were expecting it to have restored from some certain state and it didn't, now it's up and serving requests again with the wrong 
uh, content and they'd be pretty irritated about that because um, at the least they'd have to reorchestrate the restore process and at the worst could, they could potentially be serving the wrong data back to the back to users so I think it's important um, that there's kind of a deterministic option here that uh, they can the know. deterministic option is immediate um, for at least okay. the restore thing. Okay. You know, any of these other ones are gonna, they're gonna be races that I'm not sure that we'll ever. Um, yeah. Okay. So that, yeah. Never I mean, potentially if, address. And that could be something that, um, I mean, at least if it's documented that in an eventually consistent system, um, it is possible that, um, you know, that, uh, the VM won't be restored exactly when you expect. So to ensure uh, ensure that it happens, use immediate, and then Kubert can be in charge and say like, yep, I'm gonna do this now. I think that's fair as long as that gets documented. And I think that uh, having immediate as the default is therefore uh, even more important so that we have the sort of deterministic uh, element of least surprise uh, happening by default. And then these other ones, um, you know, which I don't see being used that much, to be honest. I think immediate is going to be what most people want. In my, yeah, in but, my thinking. but it, again, it's a problem to do it as the default right now. Because it it's it forcefully stops your VM and re restores. And if you did it by mistake somehow, it's kind of surprising. So what it, again, it... as you said, if you want this to be the, the default, then I do think the rest are um, maybe redundant. Um, I think the safest one is, is the timeout, which currently allows the user to, to decide if he wanted this restore or not and stop the VM if he wants. So I'm, I'm a little bit in disagreement of that because there's other damaging operations that we allow, like you can delete the VM and we don't do like a timeout to say, are you sure? Like when you're using the Kubernetes resources, um, we're kind of expecting you to be careful with your commands. So like, I don't, I, for me, I don't, I wouldn't want to try to protect the user from themselves in this case. And then not have an are you sure when you try to delete uh, a Kubert VM period, because that's, you know, we do, we allow that without mm -hmm. a delay today. I don't know what other people think, but like, I, I don't. So I, I don't. I, I think that I don't mind. I don't know. I, I think that we're, I, I don't think we should, uh, let these weird again these a lot of these race conditions that Charlie's talking about are kind of super edge cases and very very small and mm -hmm. yes we have to understand them and know that they exist but I think in the default case I think the timeout thing is probably fine you know I don't think it should be too long um, but if you do want to ensure that you um, you know. Uh, are going to do this operation, you know, if you, if you want to uh, eliminate the most possible races and edge cases, immediate is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. you know, if that's what you're optimizing for. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, I guess I'm happy to defer that judgment to you guys. Just some thoughts on it in terms of predictability whatever whatever works um okay yeah I'm, yeah i think hopefully i don't know it, it it's interesting because i think if users were used to using the api 
they're used to shutting down their VM before doing a restore. Um, to new to new users, it may be um, different, um, and then they'll probably prefer immediate. You know, maybe users don't like shutting down their VMs, so it is tough. I don't know. I think either way has trade offs. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts on this topic? All right. Uh, any other topics? I see that we don't have any new issues to triage today, so we don't have to dive into that um, unless someone has an issue they specifically want us to look at. All right, so last call for new topics, and then we'll end a few minutes early. Going, going, gone. All right, so thanks everybody for joining, and we'll see you at the next SIG storage meeting in about two weeks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.